It's actually amazing that most of us appear to be normal. I am delighted to join you this morning during the official launch of the African Plant Breeding Academy of the African Orphans Crop Consortium. I wish to thank the Director General of World Agroforestry Center, Dr. Anthony Simons, for extending this invitation to me. I am particularly happy to know that the academy we are launching today is going to focus on African indigenous crops that have been under researched, owned, and have not been promoted adequately by stakeholders in the agriculture sector. Today was truly a momentous event. Ten international partners came together to launch the African Orphan Crop Consortium. The African Orphan Crops Consortium is what some people would call as a loosely based, uncommon collaboration. It's, it's a management group, if you will, that helps to bring to reality the idea of breeding nutritious, traditional plants in the rural sector to have higher nutrition. Micronutrients, vitamin A, zinc, these areas of things that are missing from these foods that cause stunting in children, which is an, an effect of malnutrition and chronic hunger. Stunting is a condition that begins at conception and at the end of 24 months, if nothing has been done to correct it, means that a child neurologically will not develop completely, physically will not develop completely, and economic in their future will not reach their potential. So it's a question of offering someone a way to reach their full potential or knowing that they won't. No other continent in the world as the malnutrition problems that Africa does. No other continent. 37% of children are malnourished. And what that means is they will never ever reach their full physical or their full cognitive potential. And that is an enormous loss to Africa and to those individuals. Essentially what the African Orphan Crop Consortium is doing is, is investigating the nutritive value of the foods that the African population are eating. We will not solve the food insecurity and malnutrition problems with maize or rice or potatoes in Africa. We've got to diversify that diet. In Africa, we live on the poorest, the most rural, the most malnourished and the least forested continent. Economic growth is happening, but often at the expense of environmental and social indicators. We're in a fragile condition, and initiatives that can make us more robust and more sustainable are sorely needed. And the African Orphan Crops Consortium is one of those initiatives. Well, what the issues are that we face is that we must double food production by 2050. That's roughly the number that people talk about. What that means is that we must grow as much food between now and 2050 as, that has been produced for the entire history of the world. So if you can understand scale, that's a real important piece of scale. 
But it's not just about caloric density, it's also about nutritional security. And so the African Orphan Crops Consortium is most concerned about the diversity and also the nutritive value of that food being consumed in both urban and in rural se settings. It is estimated that about one billion people in the world are suffering from food insecurity. In, Af sub sub in Sub-Saharan Africa, about 227 million people, constituting about 30% of the population, is chronically undernourished. But nutrition is our driving force. If we can create nutritious plants, we can change the world. We want to increase the nutritional content of the food of the rural sector of an entire continent. Breeding new crops is important for ensuring food security. By developing new varieties that are high yielding, resistant to pests and diseases, drought tolerant, or adapted to different <coughs> growing environments. This is now more important than ever before due to the challenge of climate change. The rapid ion torrent sequencing technology. This technology we can summarize in three simple words. Speed, simplicity, and scalability. And this is where the future is coming. Actually, the whole technology is based on this chip. And this chip is the machine. The sequencing is done now on this kind of thing. This chip has made a difference. This chip, if you look deeper, it has 166 million holes. And when you put a sample inside, it strips the sample into different uh, constituents, parameters. And thanks to that, we can analyze the genomes, we can analyze, sequence the different samples. We can sequence the African crops much faster than before. We can sequence them with much more data so we can really see the difference. And then we can help the scientists and the breeders to implement that knowledge and develop much better crops. We're starting with four equipment. And what our future is the leading research uh, genome research institutions. We're able to get omics data, get environment data, get our modelings, and we finally can precisely predict all the phenotypes. And what's more, we can design crops. If we want have which kind, the kind of nutrition to be enriched in kind, which kind of uh, crops, we can ideally select the right seeds and the right environmental and the right conditions to grow it and get those nutrition. Or if we want to improve the uh, resistance to disease, to drought tolerant, and to improve uh, yield, all the things we can do from there by because of the, the we know everything we can control from seeds and can select the right environment and finally to find the final, final productions. So here we're studying uh, molecular labs, to sequencing labs here, and what we focus on first, well, often crops. What we'll achieve in the future is the seeds. The African Oven Crop Consortium aims to sequence the genomes of 96 indigenous orphan crops that are important for African diets. Some of these crops include potato, eggplant, cocoyam, Ethiopian mustard, cassava, millet, sorghum, and legumes. The goal is to improve the nutritional content as well as to decrease the malnutrition in Africa. We believe that the African Plant Breeding Academy as part of the African Orphan Crops Consortium and with partners in Africa and around the world can help correct the lack of nutritional content in many food crops. The consortium is going to support the characterization of orphan crops. And once we have the sequences, then we can look for loci, which is a way of identifying uh, crops that are to be given to farmers. And it becomes important because they will be selected on the basis of suitability to grow in semi-arid areas, for example, or in areas where the salinity is high, coastal Kenya, for example, 
or uh, in the highlands in Kenya. So this will be a very objective way of reintroducing crops to the farmer. This commitment is important because it will help to bring the micronutrients, vitamin A, iron, zinc, uh, folic acid, into the diets of, uh, of people. The Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock and Fisheries will continue to promote jointly with the county government the production of traditional crops to boost food security. Why don't you join us? Thank you very much. Today is a great day in this country because uh, we have uh, launched uh, an academy especially targeting, uh, uh, they call it orphan crops, but the indigenous crops that uh, we know as Africa or as Kenya, that it is a solution for the future. In that, uh, as we are facing climate change, uh, we are facing up peoples in the, in the change of climate and, and, uh, and going forward with a lot of uh, the, the technological uh, advancement. But there are people who are not going to achieve their optimal potential because they don't get enough nutrients during pregnancy, in the mother, or in early childhood. So that's what we're trying to make sure it's right now. The African Orphan Crop Consortium is seeking to address the knowledge gaps on these species that have enormous potential. Vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, immune boosters to change the health of the African population. Indigenous food it's good for them, it is even having high nutritional value than even the produced crop.